Southern California Edison is laying out some major bank for the Charge Ready Transport Program. We're talking $356 million in investment, trying to put in at least 870 commercial charging stations over the next five years, where they hopefully will be charging over 8,000 public transport vehicles. This is an attempt to revamp pretty much every single fleet that's used in local government uh, possible. So things like buses and trucks and all of that. This is a great idea designed to fuel, you know, this is a, a major step forward to take pollution causing large transport vehicles off the road, get them out of the way and replace them with good electric vehicles. And it's definitely something I think we can all be happy about. And Hopefully, it's a model for lots of other municipalities to, to say, hey, we like that. Let's do what they just did. Um, where it comes out from, what drives us does not endorse any candidate, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> We're not doing that. Oh, um, oh. This is supposedly tied into the Biders, the Biden-Sanders Unity Task Force Climate Change Plan, which... Uh, me go check my stats is designed to get us to net zero emissions by 2030 carbon free power production by 2035 and accelerated adoption of zero emission vehicles also kind of a super good idea if we'd like to live reasonably well on this planet for the next hundred years but some of us don't and i respect your choice so that's what's happening i'm pretty good i'm pretty happy about that I have to say, though, the one thing that I think we're going to have to go forward with on public transportation vehicles from here on in, how do we deal with coronavirus and COVID-19 as we progress as a society? Because something tells me it's not going to go away just because it's summer and then we won't deal with it again. And it could also spring back up even if we finally get it to die down. And I have not yet seen anybody addressing what do we do about social distancing on buses and maintaining transportation plans, especially to all those neighborhoods where our essential workers live. So, but good news anyway, 356 million, 870 commercial charging stations, over 8,000 commercial vehicles, all for it. Let's have more of that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. impressive. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like that one of the commenters on the article said, uh, why not also do school buses with vehicle to grid because uh, they don't work at night and they sit idle for 150 days a year. Well, they are, they are trying to replace school buses and I think that's pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they pointed that's... out the, here Dominion is doing that. Oh, in Dominion. Well, it's up. They're doing something, and that's good. They're doing something. <laughs> it's really so, I mean, one of the things, one of the things with this infrastructure um, work, it, you know, the, one of the biggest things to compare it to, you know, the Biden Sanders, um, is there a name for it? Just climate plan. Yes, it's that's a clean rather energy. Clean, oh, energy. Clean, clean energy industry or, or Biden. Climate plan. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, you know. You, the one thing that I keep comparing it to, at least mentally, if nothing else, is the interstate system. You know, coming out of the depression, we, we put people to work making interstates, building interstates, building up the infrastructure, um, making the United States better and stronger through hiring people to build these things. So people got jobs, um, you know, the, the, the money was, was liquid throughout the economy. Uh, you know, so the people had jobs, they were getting a paycheck, they were using that paycheck to go to their local restaurants, to go to the local stores, the money was, was circulating. And at the end of the day, the United States got this really cool interstate system along with other in enhanced infrastructures. The same thing's going to happen here. The transition from fossil fuels to clean energy, we already see it's driving thousands of green tech jobs. These people are working and it's not a you know ebb and flow who's getting the you know the oil subsidies this time this is constant green energy work 
as we ramp that up, you're only going to see it getting bigger and bigger and more people getting, you know, being put to work in green tech. And at the end of the day, what happens? We have all these people getting paid and the United States gets a really cool infrastructure that is more sustainable than what we're using right now. And guess what? Our students don't have to breathe diesel on their way to and from school every day. I used to I'm looking that. forward to it. Yeah. yeah. Well, plus you're not pumping the neighborhood with it for the, uh, for the rest of the <laughs> society. Right. There's right. That. Well, it's, con it's convincing people that the investment is worth it because a lot of people, if it's not directly benefiting them and I make no judgment, why should they have to pay their tax? Now, the problem is, is that uh, we've kind of stepped away as a country uh, with a, from the holistic concept that what affects one neighborhood in America affects all neighborhoods in America, and it is of mm -hmm. benefit. So one of the things I've always said about uh, progressive or democratic messaging is they appeal to the altruistic side of humanity. We all want to save the, the burring owls. Well, no, we have a lot of people who couldn't give a flying fuck about the burrowing owls. They don't care about their neighbor down the block, and they don't care about some guy on the other side of the planet. They don't care. They want their cheap shit, they want their stuff, and they want to be protected, and they want it all for themselves. So you kind of have to start talking about the selfish nature of self-preservation and frame things as a personal benefit to you. So stop talking mm -hmm. about saving the burrowing owls. Stop talking about workers' rights in China. They don't care. They've already made it pretty clear. They don't give a flying, you know what. Mm -hmm. But if you make it so we understand it, hey, it enhances stability here at home. It improves the environment here at home. It means that you make an initial investment, just like when you bought your house, you spend a whole lot of money to have a damned house, and then you improve the kitchen. And God, that cost so much and took so much time. But at the end of the day, it improved the overall value of your house and you got to be the big man of the neighborhood or a big woman of the neighborhood, frame it like that. And you're probably going to see more of the people who just do this about everything sustainable actually go, okay, I can be on board about that. That's the part that I never really understood is, is that doing the, the green thing is almost always more profitable or at least less costly. Mm -hmm. And that's the, the thing. thing. We need to frame it like we're all dicks. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. Keep framing it yeah. like we're all angels. No, we got at least a good 30 to 50% dicks in this environment. Please talk to them like they're major assholes and make it appealing for assholes. Right. And, you know, that's, you're exactly right, George. I, mean, I agree with you 100%. And this is why the mini car shows and Green Drive Expo and to go before and, you know, all the times I've had the opportunity to talk to the public, I, I get a check for that, right, Russell? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I've always come at the Checks green the tech argument from multiple facets and depending on who I'm going, who I'm talking to, it's either the save the rainforest argument or it's the energy independence argument. So I'm either talking to people about save the environment, the environment's great, save, you know, love mother nature, or I'm talking to someone who only cares about themselves, and I'm talking about importing oil from, from countries who hate us. I'm talking about sending American troops to go die to protect a pipeline on another part of the world. I'm talking about you know, being more American and, and, and supporting the United States by capturing the sun that falls in the United States by spinning wheels with the wind God. that comes across the American plains. You start waving the American flag and talking they about energy nuts. independence. And yeah, they go nuts, man. They put their MAGA hat on and they're all for it. Yeah, look, Plus, if you want to frame it as pride in American workmanship and solar and ingenuity, it gets me to the same point as, oh, we want to save the planet. I don't yeah. care, but just yeah. let's get yeah. the sustainability. Yeah. Plus yeah. when you go self-sustainable, you, you can either spend that money somewhere else or reduce the taxes. Mm -hmm. It's um, as someone who used to talk to people every day, it, usually a couple hundred people every day about solar and try to sell them on solar and batteries. One learns to size up their prospect quickly and find out which side they're on. And, and Georgia mm -hmm. and Tony's points are here are super well made because you don't want to give the tree hugging, fuzzy, warm, save the planet 
speech to the MAGA hat. The MAGA hat wants to hear about energy independence and screwing the utility and rugged individualism and survivalism. You're, you're doing the same thing. You're selling the same exact product. You're just presenting it in a way that will appeal to the person in front of you. And that is what's missing a lot. Yeah. Oh, you go to you go to Southern Appalachia's and say, hey, you know what? If we use renewable energy, we don't have to rip the tops off of those mountains. Nope. You don't have to set your, your tap water on fire. We could bring you clean energy. Grandpappy worked in those mines, okay? <laughs> All right, all right. That's my heritage. Uh, it's it's tough. It's you know what how to how to market it isn't always easy, isn't always obvious, but a lot of times it is. We just screw it up because we're lazy and. Oh, so we, we think we like to think reasoning um, on the left, especially. We think reasoning. Everybody's got this reasoning and empathetic character. We just got to touch their hearts, bitch. They don't got no hearts. Just talk. <laughs> <them all. laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it, like I am, I am a, I am the softest freaking touch in the world. I see an animal. Yes, I want. Here's my dollar. Here's my dime. Here's everything I got. Go on ahead, take me. But I have learned after many long years of watching the futility on all sides of all the issues, and I've just been like, they're completely speaking a different language. If you wish to communicate, you must learn their language because I hate to tell you this. They've learned the language of the left and they've applied it to how they name their bills, how they couch everything that they want to do. And it'll be completely the polar opposite of whatever they say it is in the actual result, but they know how to couch those terms. So the right and the, the big utilities speak the language of save the planet and green and sustainable and independence. And they understand how to communicate that and package that. People on the sustainability side, all of the other side, all that on the left side and the democratic side are always busy talking about hearts and flowers. They don't want no fucking flowers. They want their money and they want to pretend that they are all alpha males in the bad, in, incorrect definition of alpha males. We should have just sold them masks by saying, hey, you want to look like Bane, who is super cool, right? Uh, guns. Put on a mask. That would have worked. Probably done a great job. Same thing with sustainability. Let's uh, talk about, protect. yeah, just, just be angry male with a angry masculine energy with a mask and yeah. probably would have helped. We need to do the same thing with sustainability. We hit them with what appeals to them. And I think this program and the investment is a great way to get people started thinking and working on that. Yeah. Like the Florida protect the sunshine act that really made it illegal to use solar panels. Thankfully, <laughs> thankfully that thing failed. Thank God. <laughs> yeah.